the morning hustle with L'Oreal, yes. Kyle Santillian, and we have guests in the building. I'm excited to talk to these brothers <laughs> right here because I feel like, you know, this is one of those conversations where you can't take nothing away from it, from information and knowledge and just better yourself, man. Mm-hmm. We got the brothers in the building from Earn Your Leisure, the podcast, the brand, Rashad and Troy are here today. Come on, the fellas. Oh, nice going on. What's going yeah. on? Thank Number you one. Me. There's a whole lot of money in this world. <laughs> <laughs> right. How y'all yeah, feeling? I'm good, feeling man. great, thank, man. Thank you for having us. Appreciate yeah. it. First and foremost, man, congratulations on everything that you guys have built. You've been really making waves and not just making waves for yourselves, but you've been sharing a lot of this information, trying to get our community to basically get their money right, correct? Yeah, that's the goal, you know, to really empower everybody. But of course, you know, our community, because we need it. Yeah. So, you know, when we started the platform, that was the original mission, financial literacy, business empowerment. And that's the same same path that we're still on to this day. So it's a blessing that so many people have championed us and so many people have gravitated towards the message. And more importantly, they've, they've seen results. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. People change their lives. You know, they... they Brought their first home. They, you know, make money on Airbnb. They invest in their children's college. They buy stocks. So, a lot of that, you know, was done through watching our platform and learning. Um, so it's it's a blessing. Yeah, that's what's up. That's a fact. I mean, once you people get education, and they learn and execute from it, it's almost like they feel indebted to the person that gave it to them. Yeah. And so, the number one thing we tell people that to pay us back is just spread it to the next person. Mm. It's like that's how you really build community, right? Like sure. if I give you something and you learn from it, now give it to the next person. And it, the cycle keeps keeps going. Absolutely. And not only are y'all high up, way up there when it comes to the top podcast in the game, period, but you also have Invest Fest that you started last year, sold out immediately. Two years ago, two years two ago. Two years ago, sorry, yeah. two years ago, sold out immediately. You guys are going back to Georgia, back to Atlanta. Invest Fest is coming back to Atlanta. Yeah. You know, how are y'all doing it bigger this year? How are y'all going to change it around this year a little bit? Yeah, so every year we it, it gets bigger. The mm-hmm. first year, two years ago, we had 4,000 people. Mm. Probably had around like 100 vendors in the vendor marketplace, had a, f- a few food trucks. We had Fabulous perform as a musical performer. We had Jagged Edge and Neo for VIP night perform. So it, it, was, it was a good vibe. It was, it was you know, the first time anything had like, like that had ever happened, and mm-hmm. everybody was really excited about it. So next year, last year, it went from 4,000 to 14,000. What? Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. So we had, Four Tyler, we had Tyler Perry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah, Steve, Steve Harvey. Harvey right? yes, we, had, yes. we had Ross perform. We had Don Peebles, legendary real estate investor. Dan Cathy, actually the CEO of Chick-fil-A. Wow. Um, he was there and a bunch of other people. So It wasn't on a Sunday, child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was on Sunday. Oh, so he was off. Well, they he was off. Yeah. 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 That's, That's how we that. plan that. That's well, who's on the wish list? <laughs> like, when you talk about a wish list, like, the headliners this year are Robert Smith and Diddy. Wow. Yeah. And it's like, you know, Robert Smith. No bell Smith. rings for that? No. Yeah. Really? I, was, I was like this. <laughs> I was in awe. Right. <laughs> so Robert Smith, I mean, the wealthiest black person yes. in American history. Mm-hmm. Um, and the second richest black person in the world. Mm. A, a net worth of $8 billion. Um, and... People are just now becoming familiar with him, especially what he did in Atlanta with uh, Morehouse. Right. Okay. When he yeah. paid off the uh, student loans for, for all of that, that graduating class. So this is somebody that is worth $8 billion that's from our community, that's black, from America, and had nothing to do with sports or entertainment, <clears throat> private equity. So it's like to be able to contact and, and have a relationship with somebody like that is amazing. Yeah. Like that what's the odds that's of that happening? Yeah. And then of course Diddy. Diddy is, you know, legend. Diddy. Another Diddy. billionaire. Yeah. Diddy. Another right. billionaire. So, you know, I never really heard Diddy speak about business too much. Like you see him when you talk about music and you talk about different things. And I just feel like this is somebody who we've watched really was a millionaire like eighteen years old. Mm-hmm. And been on for thirty years. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. He's on a thirty a thirty yeah. year run. Couldn't like, rap. I feel like the only <laughs> he couldn't. Right. I I like chat. Like you don't write. You don't write rhymes. You write he writes checks. 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 I feel like the only glimpse we got of that in Diddy's circumstances is in that documentary where we saw him on the phone no, yeah, making yeah, 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 deals yeah, yeah, yeah. and things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Even, even for like the wish list, it's like this is year three. Right, yeah. and so there's definitely people that we, we want to have, and I'm sure at some point I they will be. Think I think y'all nah, had this, everyone. This, this, <laughs> nah, nah, <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to have everyone because you want to have sustainability, right? Yeah. And so we see this thing happening, a staple for our community. Because you look at any other space, they have a form of recognition, whether it be a war show or an event, right? Yeah. So like the music, you got the Grammys, you got the Oscars yeah. for movies, 
you got all these award shows, but what happens for this financial education space? This becomes that. And so there are people who are established, but the more important thing is like there's people who are building their business now who are looking at investors like, yo, I need to be on that stage. Right. Yeah. How do I get my business to grow to be on that stage? And so it becomes a place where they can be celebrated, a place they can meet investors, a place they can meet their next partners and stuff. I so we, we got to keep that thing fresh, you know what I'm yeah. saying? For sure. Let's talk advice for the average everyday person. Like what's just one of the biggest mistakes you see the average person doing with their money and how should they correct it? Um, living beyond your means, you know, um, relying too much on credit. Over leveraging yourself on credit is something that's extremely important. Um, not having a system in place to save money. So financial education is important, but financial discipline is even probably mm -hmm. more important, right? Like you gotta be disciplined and you gotta understand delayed gratification. You gotta understand like the importance of savings, the importance of paying yourself first. These are things like nobody really wants to talk about. Everybody wants to talk about how do I flip this home yeah. and make a hundred thousand next month or how do I get into this stock and, and, and you know, ride this up for a thousand percent rate of return. But that's great. But if you can't accomplish the basics, you're never gonna be able to do any of that type of stuff. So I think that that's probably um, the biggest mistake that a variety of people make across the board. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it really comes from a lack of education mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also from just not really thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just living, living in the moment. And it's like when you're living in the moment, you're never going to be able to build when the only thing you're thinking about is right now what I'm right, doing today. Right, right, right. Uh, 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 so yeah. as far as saving, right, what is uh, some good advice that you could give somebody that may be having trouble, they got a decent paying job, and they're trying to figure out how they can start to save? Oh, just say my name. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> I, I think I'll leave it to you to the, to the yeah, financial I think, part. I think there's a few things that you can do when, when you don't have enough money at the end of the month, right? Which yeah. is, this is what this is, what you just described. There's a few things that you can do to just, kind of just make it as easy as possible. You can cut back your expenses, right? So this goes back to budgeting, right? Writing out a budget, see what you're spending money on. Sometimes you spend money on stuff that you don't even realize. You could yeah. be spending $300 a month on, on eating out, $500 a month on going to lunch like every day. You'd be like, all right, maybe I should just pack my lunch. I could save $400 a month just on that, right? So cut back your expenses. Another thing that you can do is find a way to make more money, right? So this this comes from, you know, if you... Invest fast. I yes. need it. Exactly. <laughs> Invest in L'Oreal fast. Exactly. You think I could do that? Yeah, that sound, I like the sound of that. There you go. <laughs> L'Oreal fast. That's a fact. So it's like, you know, if, you, you if, you're, if you're an employee, there's nothing to say you can't be an entrepreneur or have a side business, right? Or yeah. to be an investor. You can still invest in real estate, stuff like that. So you have to find ways to invest in your education so you can make more money, right? Um, get a, another job if you have to yeah. and, and work out. So... You either cut back your expenses, you find a way to make more money, or the optimal solution is to do both. Cut back on your expenses and find a way to make yeah, more make money. More money yeah. So that's that's the optimal solution to actually have more money to actually be able to save and be able to invest. Yeah, I think right. that, that comes from mindset. So like the first question you asked and, and encompassing with the savings part is the mindset. For so long, we've been taught to be consumers. So when we get money, we spend it, we spend it, we spend it. We never think... <clears throat> Ownership is part of our trajectory, right? And so when you have things like a savings plan like that, now you look at it, how do I create my own business? Yeah. Right? Even from the industry I'm in, right? Like if you're in education, there's so many different ways you can create income. If you're in real estate, there's so many different ways you can generate income. If you're a tax, there's just different ways. You have to have that mindset where it's like, how can I find an opportunity inside of this? Whether it's creating a consulting firm, whether it's writing lesson plans, or whether it's, you know, if you're in real estate, becoming a developer, then figuring out how to become a broker, then mm -hmm. figuring out how do I create an event space, mm -hmm. right? There's all these opportunities inside what you're doing already that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? right? So most people, they won't do these things because they say they don't have the time. Well, I always tell them, like, if you don't have the time, then you're going to be doing this. This is what your time will be doing yeah, for the rest right. of your life. Yeah. And so in order for you to create these streams, you have to look at everything as an opportunity and look at yourself as an owner inside of something rather than as being a consumer of it or an employee of a business, right? Because most times when you're an employee, that W-2, that's going to be consistent, right? Yeah. But most people won't take the risk to say, all right, I can do that and have my own business and be an entrepreneur. So now that I have money, passive income and income, not just passive, but any income to invest in what I want, create mm -hmm. the business I want, and really have some leisure time. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you guys this because, um, well, I'm not even going to assume, but what is your background like? 
I'm a, I would think that maybe you guys didn't grow up with money, and at some point you got, hey, we got to get wise about well, this. We'll give that away. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, you know, I, I, I see your focus. Like, I know a lot of times, you know, we learn to do things out of necessity, right? So what is your background? Like, how did y'all grow up? Did you have money? Did you not have money? And was there something that made you, you know, flip the switch and say, hey, we got to do things differently? I think yeah. um, we come from a working class environment. Like, my mom was a school teacher her whole life, pretty much 30 years. My dad um, sold insurance. So it was one of these things where I never wanted to have, and I don't want to be, I don't want to sound disrespectful when I'm saying this, but I never wanted to have that regular life. Yeah. Where it's mm-hmm. like, I've seen that my whole life where you work your whole entire life and it's a blessing to take a vacation after 30 years. Right. Or like, you know right. what I'm saying? Like you just, you, you, you just make it ends meet. Like you're doing good enough to live somewhere and to have a car and different things of that nature, but it's like that's it. Bare minimum. Like, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, you just go home and you know, and you, you live a, a a nice decent life. But I always thought like you know, why not do it bigger? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's opportunities out here, and I didn't really see anybody. Like I never knew anybody that was a millionaire. Right. I knew people that made a hundred thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. or eighty thousand dollars a year, and that was always the goal. Like, right, if you can make six figures, you you made it. Yeah. Right. Until you make six figures and you realize, like, I'm still not where I want to be. Like, right. I'm still struggling. Like, you know, especially if you live in a place like New York, like you making Good six luck. figures and you you just barely, <laughs> yeah. barely, barely right. by. You struggling more because you're trying to keep up, thinking right. you got some money. Yeah. So for me, it was always like entrepreneurship. I, n- I never wanted to work a regular job. I never really had a regular job. I always was like, all right, I want to do business. I didn't always have the idea of how I wanted to do it, mm-hmm. but I knew I knew that I always wanted to be in business. I always wanted to be an investor because I felt like that was the only pathway to where I wanted to go. Yeah. Right? I tried to play basketball. That didn't work out mm-hmm. on a professional level. So it's like, all right, when you realize you don't really have talent as a musician, your sports career is over. Yeah. What else you gonna do? Like entrepreneurship business, that's the only avenue that I really saw. I have a regular just communications degree from a state school. So it's not like I was gonna go on Wall Street and get a job. Like, you know, that would just I would just be on job fairs right now, just trying to, you know, get get in where I fit in if I was relying on my college degree. So That's crazy. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's kinda my my pathway. Yeah. And why I was always into like, you know, this because I just saw it as an opportunity to really just live the life that you want. For me, it's about freedom. It's not really about the money. The money provides you freedom. Right. Right. But I, I want to be able to just do whatever I want to do. I want to be able to go on vacation. I want to eat when I want to eat. I don't want to necessarily have to eat at 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I, might right. be hungry. I might not be hungry at 12. I might be hungry at 3. Like, right. you know, I might say not be hungry three at times. all. I might want to go to my son's <laughs> basketball game at 2 o'clock. And not at, you know. Yeah. So these are, these are, the, these are the, own, the freedoms that you have as an entrepreneur. But, um, Unfortunately, not a lot of times as an employee. Yeah, right. My, my story is uh, completely different. Um, so I'm first generation American. My whole family's from Jamaica. Okay. Um, you know, <laughs> shout out to Jamaica. Yeah, now. Nah, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> big, big tens of we, we, we never had any conversations about finance. In fact, anytime that I thought about money, it was like my, my dad would be asking my mom for money. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, I'm like, yo, you got a job. Like, you working. Like, why are you asking her for the money? But I knew that he didn't have financial discipline. As you get older, Same you, re- my house. You, you realize these things like, yeah. oh, that's why he's doing yeah. it. And so yeah. we, we really never had the conversation, even as far as his work. Like, I know he went to work. I know my mom went to work, but I never knew what they did. Right. You know, I just knew that they came home and they was gone a lot of the time. So they, they didn't get to come to my basketball games or they didn't come to some events. But they were making the, the, the financial decision to say, like, this is more important than that. Right. So they missed out on a lot of things. And so, like, I, I had the nine to five. I was a teacher for 13 years. Mm. And that everything that I'm telling you, like, hey, if, if I don't figure out what I'm going to do and I'll be doing this, that's what I was battling with. Like, I'm like, yo, I know there's a bigger calling in my life. Yeah. There's a bigger purpose in my life. I know I have something to give to the world and I don't think it's going to be this, right? So I was teaching phys ed and health at the time. I'm like, this is cool, but like there's something bigger. And so like being inside that system and learning, what, seeing what the kids were learning, I realized like that this, is, this isn't it, right? You made the right, right. decision. You see these kids yeah. fighting these teachers yeah. Yeah. I think right. you would have got I, them I, though. I've, <laughs> I've been tested a few times. I, wow. I, I, I'm, I'm undefeated, but like, <laughs> that's not, but like you see it and you're like, all right, this it's like the cycle that just it keeps perpetuating itself. Yeah. It's yeah. like every day I could be the biggest, most positive influence inside that school, 
But at three o'clock, the environment takes over. Yeah, that's right. I leave, yeah. go back to where I live. They go back to where they live, and it's a reset. And then in the summer, forget about it. It's like now it's two months, and they didn't see any of these influences. It's right. just like, damn, how do I we create something that's more impactful? So that's where financial literacy came into it. It was a missing piece inside the school system. I'm like, all right, we can do that. And so that's where I got really interested in finance. He was already starting his career as a financial advisor. His his dad, had, you know, they were they were doing that already. So I was like, all right, this is cool. This is gonna give me an opportunity to learn and teach. And so right. we kind of partnered with that. And I was like, all right, I don't know a lot about this subject. This is like in like I'm 20, but I'm like, yo, I'm not gonna be left out of any conversation. Yeah, so no, I'm gonna study right. this and I'm gonna mm-hmm. make this a part of my life. I'm gonna learn how to invest. I'm gonna learn about all these these pieces because the the statue of like how far I can go was so low. They're like, yo, that's the gym teacher. What's, what's he gonna do? Yeah, that's how they looked at you. Right. As and then I'm, I'm sure there's people who still look at me like that, and that's really? fine. Right, because it's like that's cool. That was a part of my life, but they never saw this coming. Yeah, right? you see what I'm and saying? that's part of your story. You need, you need yeah. that. Exactly. Well, so, they, they're that. saying. Oh, I was gonna say. I was gonna switch the subject a little bit, if you don't mind. Go ahead, go ahead. They said we're coming into scary times. Right. <laughs> they're saying that a recession may be coming upon us. A lot of people are not prepared because it's like a double hit. You know, we were in a pandemic. A lot of people lost a lot of money, and now here we are again. Is this something that? Is truthful? Is this an internet rumor? And how can we be more prepared? I think that um, we've been in a recession. <laughs> yeah. I, think, a long time. I think, you know, it's just it's a different type of recession than we're used to. Um, but I think that we've been in a recession since last year. And um, I think that you can see that when you see l- massive amounts of jobs that are being laid off. When you see, um, you know, the inflation record highs yeah you know interest rates going up so it's it's already a squeeze especially on the middle class for sure and um once again the only way to really kind of protect yourself from that is investing in business yeah right like investing because investing is a way to grow your money faster than inflation Mm because if your money doesn't grow faster than inflation then you're actually losing money Right. right so if you just got your money sitting in the bank and inflation is 10%, 8%, then every year you're losing 8% on your money. Like yeah. It's getting weaker. Right, because you're only making, what, 2% on the exactly. bank or whatever. Not even that, probably, right. probably Not point half, zero, three half percent. of 1%. Right. Percent, something. Yeah. So it's like you're losing money every year. So, you know, in a perfect world, I know investments don't go up all the time, right? That's why you have to be intelligent on what you invest in. But mm-hmm. over the long haul, if you invest and you're making money, now your money is actually growing. Yeah. So your buying power is growing. And then business, I feel like, is an opportunity for you to be recession-proof in a sense where you're not relying. Like we saw Don Lemon. Yeah. You know, 17 years, I think he was with CNN, and they fired him over email. That's it. And they already had his replacement before they fired him. So right. no company has any loyalty to right. you. Right. And I think that that's something that's is important. Like you could work somewhere for 50 years. If it makes sense for the company to fire you, they're going to fire they're you. They're out of here. You're out of here. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, all right, well, as a business owner, there's ups and downs and there's no guarantee that your business will work. But at the very least, you can't get fired. Like, you know, that's that's, that's your business. That's yours. So it's like it's up to you to make it work. You got to put in hours. You probably end up working a lot more than a regular job. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a certain level of um you know, independence that you have knowing that, all right, like my destiny is in my hands. Right. Mm-hmm. As opposed to my destiny being in my boss's hands. Mm-hmm. A lot of people invested <coughs> in Bitcoin thinking that that was going to be their saving grace. Yeah. And now, yep. you know, uh, they're in trouble. A lot of people are in trouble. Would you think like the crypto thing is? Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't know if they're in trouble, right? People have lost money because they looked at it as they were trading it which is different from investing it, okay, right? When I trade right. it, I do something that might be within hours, I might be within a day, might be within a month. And so if you look at Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general, it's a volatile asset. And so it goes up and down very quickly, yeah. right? We saw it at 13,000, now it's at 30,000, right? So the person who invested in it might have got it at 13,000 and now they're up 15 grand. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. right. If we're trading it, if we don't have the education on how to trade and how to read technical, it, yeah, if you're not educated, you might lose money. Because to your point, just to um, separate the two, trading is short term, investing is long term. Look, yeah, I'm looking at it as a long term investment, right? Yeah. So if somebody invested in 2016 when it dropped down to three, when is that $3,000? Mm-hmm. They're not looking at this like this is a loss. It's the problem is like when we see things, you know, when they, Ascend and they, they appreciate so high when it goes up to sixty thousand. It's like wait, everybody's doing this. Yeah. It's in the news everywhere. I gotta invest in it, right? right. Just just because it's yellow. Like I don't I don't want to miss this out, right? Not yellow, but fair missing out. I don't want to lose out. Everybody's investing, and what happens? 
It tanks. Yeah. yeah. Right? And then it's like, oh, I should have never done this. I lost my money. And then they take mm-hmm. their money out. Because they were too late. They were too late, right? Yeah. But if we're thinking that in a long-term position, what does Bitcoin look like in five t- years? What does it look like in 10 years? What would it look like in 20 years? Because everybody will tell you, like, oh, it, it's a fad. It's going to go away. Yeah, that's what they say Yeah, now, but it's, right? it's been 12 years now. So and it's, it's, it's appreciated faster than gold. And the feds just created their own cryptocurrency, but, correct? Right. So if you look at what everybody's doing around it, right, let's create fear around it. While they're creating a the fear, let's build our own. Right. Right. So like yeah. the, the, the Fed is yeah. doing that. Right. Then that. That's telling you something, right? Mm-hmm. The fact that they can't collapse it is telling you something. Mm-hmm. They're trying to take it over. Right. The fact that we, you know, we look at money and it, it's not in the paper form like we grew up. It's already in digital form. Right, we use yeah. our debit card. We pay through Zelle. We we don't we don't even have we don't use it the same way. No. Right, we've been prepared for this moment. Right. right, but if I put fear around it, I can get companies out of it that might not be, you know, the 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 the, the best way of doing business. But it's like, oh, business is business. If I can create an uh, a strategy, I can create a platform that's more regulatory uh, mandates and people feel safe about it better than what you're doing. I'm gonna take the chance. Right, and like that's what you. That's I think where we're headed with it. So what do y'all think is a good entry point for somebody trying to invest? You have crypto. You have some people that are investing in small businesses and doing crowdfunding and things of that nature. You have some people like me who kind of just started to briefly like just read about things and stocks during the pandemic. You know what I mean? Like there's so many different avenues. Do you guys recommend a specific entry point? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, you so you always have to live somewhere. <clears throat> so real estate is always is always um, going to be an asset. Especially, you know, if you buy in a good neighborhood, that's going to appreciate over the course of time. So maybe, you know, look at real estate as your first investment. Um, and even, you know, we talk about house hacking a lot, where it's like you could live in like a multifamily home where, you know, especially in the Northeast, it's real popular where it might be um, three units in, in, in a house. Right. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, you know, you, you live on one level, you're renting out downstairs or you might be renting out the attic and so that's actually a way to actually make money. So you're not just putting yourself in debt because that's another trap sometimes. You buy a house that you can't afford yeah. and now you're working just to pay off the mortgage. Right. So it's like, all right, well, in that scenario, um, you have a mortgage, but you're also getting rental income from two tenants that live in the building as well. Mm-hmm. And now not only are they, they, they're paying your mortgage, but you're actually probably making some money on it as well. Um, and that's if you're living there. And of course you can buy property that you don't live in as well and, and rent it out there's a lot of colleges here in Atlanta, right? right. There's opportunities. So um, real estate is something that is is beneficial because, like, at the core necessity of life is food and shelter. Mm-hmm. Like, you do have to eat and you have to live somewhere. So if you can own a property um, where people are going to live, then that's that's a good starting point, I think. And then stocks are, are e- relatively easy to get into. Mm-hmm. And much lower as far as like, you could start investing in stocks for a couple hundred dollars, right? Like real estate, you have to have a little bit more capital than that, obviously. Mm-hmm. So stocks and, you know, just broad range. We're talking about the S&P 500. That is 500 companies on the stock market that make up the stock market, like the strongest companies, Apple, Microsoft, Google. So, you know, you don't have to um, take too much risk. You don't have to try to be a stock market expert. You can just kind of play it safe, right? right. And just start buying stock, and you know that appreciates over the course of time. Put money in every every month, and people do that with their four hundred one k, and they don't even realize. And then before That's you know it, you is, got hundred thousand, right? you got two hundred thousand in your four hundred one k because you just been putting money. They they've taken the money out. You don't even yeah. have a chance. Yeah. Right. So it's like if you have that same approach for your own personal, you know, brokerage account, then that that is beneficial as well. So those are two. Um, Starting points, I think. Mm-hmm. Stocks is probably easier yeah. to get into because you don't have to, like, find a property and, you know, go through all of that. But if you can, you know, get involved in real estate, even if it's, like, you know, one property every couple of years, whatever, right? right? Like, you know, you, you, you build a pyramid one brick at a time. But um, I feel like if, if you can start with those two um, and continue it over the course of time, then that w- that's a, a great starting point. Yeah. Sure. And if, if you can't do the real estate by yourself, then that's an opportunity to partner with somebody, yeah. right? And that creates a the business. The right somebody. The right somebody. Right. Now, it's yeah. important because a lot of times, like, we, we can't get into real estate. My <laughs> I don't, my credit score is not what is needed. I, I can't meet the, the bare minimum. I don't have the 650 credit score. Well, maybe find somebody who does, the right yeah. somebody who does. Is that but, what you need at least, a 650? Well, it depends on what program you're trying to do. Um, but that that's an alternative. But I think the stocks is, is important, too, because that's something that you can do. Right yeah. now, like right when you now. said, when's the time? Like you do that today, with no help. With no help. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the Minimum. thing. Like you already, you already know. Like, and we talk about this all the time. But mm-hmm. it's like, look at the way you're spending your money now. Yeah. Right. Like, look at, look at, if you look at the products in here or what you spend on a monthly basis, you're paying that already, mm-hmm. right? And so, if you treat your brokerage account, which is where you would trade your stocks, 
like your bills, then you just every time you get paid, you put money into your brokerage, you put money mm-hmm. into your brokerage, Thanks. right? And every time you do that and you invest in companies that you're already spending with, whether it be Apple, I see there's a Clorox thing. These are companies yeah. that you're already spending money yeah. with. And it goes back to the conversation of that owner versus consumer, right? right? You don't know that like having a, a share of it is like, yo, I have ownership in it. Even mm-hmm. like, I know people love to shop. So like even like LVMH, like people are buying that at a high rate. They're like, Bruno is the, the wealthiest man in the world now. Right. That's right? Crazy. He, he passed Elon. Yeah. And so you think about that, like, how is he doing that? And they'll be like, we're voting on this today. I'll be like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't own nothing. In this. <laughs> <laughs> My vote doesn't yeah. really count. How's, but he you do, do how's he doing that? Yeah. Right. He, on our backs. Right? Yeah, that's right. Backs. Right? The, the Louis Vuitton store, every time you go to it, is there a line? 1, every time. Mm-hmm. Every time. Every yeah. time. Right? When we go out, what are we drinking? Are we drinking my wife? Are we drinking Hansi? Yeah. Like, we're drinking these luxury brands. Every time we do that and Wearing we purchase 50. it. <laughs> every, exactly. Every time we do that, we're adding to his portfolio of wealth, right? And so, if we look at it from a standpoint like, if we're going to do that, why not have a piece of the, of, of the pie as well? Have right. ownership in it, That's which right. is opportunity. Right. And you can do that every day, every single day. I don't care if it's if you're putting twenty dollars into your brokerage until you have enough to buy a share. But if you do that consistently, now you have both sides of the coin. What about sure. the talk about the power of the dollar? Like everybody's backing away from the U.S. dollar. Uh, what does that mean for us? Um, yeah, I think that, you know, the world is becoming more independent. And, you know, the, the influence that America had is slowly, you know, decreasing. Mm-hmm. But it's still the strongest country. America, the dollar is still the strongest currency right. in the world by far, the most widely traded currency in the world by far. So people are still using the dollar all over the world. But I think it's important to, <clears throat> to be educated, you know. Things change. Nothing stays the same. Right. So, you know, um, when you, this is an opportunity to look at, you know, alternatives, once again, the cryptocurrency, mm-hmm. but also international plays as well. Mm-hmm. Like, like Forex. Know. Would y'all recommend Forex? A lot of people felt like it was a little iffy. Yeah, Forex is, you know, you, once again, you just have to be educated on it as far as um, whatever, anything you do. You, know, you, yeah. can, you can make money in Forex, but it's not something I think people kind of got caught in just thinking it's a get rich quick scheme right 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 right. and you know whenever you 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 whenever you have ideas to get rich quick you usually go broke fast yeah mm-hmm. so <laughs> real, real fast the bell for that's go a t-shirt fast. <laughs> the go, bro- yeah. go broke fast yeah. so, but, um, get rich quick go, go broke, broke fast. fast that's a fact yeah. so yeah but you know international just expanding your your, your reach like we just came back from canada and um, we did two sold out shows out there in, in Toronto. That's fire. And I'm um, looking to do more stuff out there. We're going to London. We're going to Ghana. So With I your f- dollar. Yeah. <laughs> With the dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then, yeah. and then making currency out there and yeah. establishing business relationships out there. So I feel like, you know, it, there's nothing to say that we have to stay in America to do everything. Like, why not look at real estate in Jamaica? Why not go to Africa and see what you can do out there? Yeah. Like, why not? Like, you know, that's what we trying to do. So, man, I love you guys. It's, totally yeah. Yeah. Fact, it's a global, it's a global yeah. economy. For sure. <laughs> when you guys have a, like a checklist of all of your goals, you know what I mean? Or have you checked out all of your goals and now everything is gravy? Nah, there's definitely some things that are on the goal sheet. Um, like I, I, I said, I see us as a billion dollar media company. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> we're not there yet, but I'm about to say y'all, y'all well on your way. Yeah, we can yeah. we can see the vision for it, right? Yeah. We can see what you know the verticals that we're building, the the way that we're providing information to a community that's been underserved is there. The vision is there, um, and just the, the intermediate goals. I know that one. I mean, that's not far out. That could be five to ten years, but investing in international real estate is one of those goals. Um, just creating education for people around finance right like we come from the the financial capital of the world new york city mm-hmm. and there's nobody there's no curriculum that teaches financial literacy right. to students that's so crazy that's like crazy, zero right? and that's we, bad we, we, yeah well georgia actually just passed oh wow yeah so georgia okay. florida has a mandate but new york doesn't florida got rid of uh any black history and then they put in ridiculous uh, <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> ridiculous. Crazy, right? ridiculous one or the other right yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Money, you learn about history, right yeah no <laughs> forget that's the past let's crazy. do it now. yeah that, that's completely ridiculous <laughs> yeah but like yeah like what what is what does the country look like when it's it's a, a mandate for the entire united states in financial literacy, it is paramount in they the forefront, do right? That. It should be. So, so, like, that's on the goal list. How do we educate the masses, but not even just in America? How do we do that for the world? Okay, so I wanted to switch gears a little bit. So, there's been a discussion on social media 
So on this discussion of 50-50, how much a woman should be contributing to the relationship towards the finances, what do you guys think about that? In this society today, most of the time, um, women and men are both contributing contributing financially. Yeah. You know, that's the environment. Mm-hmm. That's the environment that I came from. Like that's that's the household that I came from. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that there was any shame um in that. Yeah. Right? Cuz it's like you you're doing the best the job that you can, but if somebody else can can provide as well, now that two people working together is better than one person. Exactly. So I I don't feel that um I feel like it's it's unproductive to kind of have like infighting between a man and a woman who should do this, who should do that. And it's unrealistic a lot of times when you look at the average um, income for black people is $35,000 a year. So this reality that people are living on Instagram where it's like, all right, the man should pay everything. Like, I've never seen that before. <laughs> and everyone has a Birkin. Don't forget the Birkin. Don't forget it. So there, there, are, there, are, there are situations like that. Yeah. But let's just be honest, the vast majority of people in our community, that's not the case. Right, it's not. So it's like, let's stop arguing over things that's not even a realistic debate. Mm. It's not even a realistic debate. You're talking about 2% of the population, 1% of the population that's even in a position to do that. Right. When 95, 99% of the population are not. We so need each other. Instead exactly. of, yeah, instead of Instead of having that debate, it's like, how can I, how can I find somebody that I can build with? Yeah. That's always the point I've been at, man. man. Even in that situation. That's a good one. Hey, you heard him today, Al? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one now. He woke up great today. Yo, that's, yeah. that's where yeah, I was at nah. with it. I tell people all the time in my situation with my wife, like, if it was somebody coming to me like, yo, well, we can't be together if you can't pay this other third. I got, <laughs> oh, yeah. We wasn't going to be together. We wasn't. Exactly you know, when me and my yeah. wife moved in together, I was still graduating college, working part-time at a radio station where she had already graduated and was working full-time. So, yeah. obviously, yeah. financially, she was covering most of that. Yeah. But now, today, 2023... I'm covering 90% of it. So yeah. it's just, you know, we we do it together. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I, I don't even look at percentages. So like what he's talking about, that's that's facts, man. That I've lived that when we were making together, me and my wife, I've been married 11 years, when we were making, I need 11 times. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. When, when, when we were making $5,000 combined a month or whether we were making $50,000, it was, that's our money. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's never like, yo, I'm paying 90%. No, nah, like that's our money. If she wants to, like, yo, go ahead. It's, and we, it's like she has her own account. I have my own account. But the majority of our money is in our joint account. That's and so if there's be, any type yeah. of expense that needs to be paid, yeah. You have to do it. Yeah. Of course, we have to get this done or else we won't have a place to live or we won't have some of the things that we need. So I never, she has access to all those things. And so like that comes with trust and comes with, you know, obviously years of, of, of a knowing team. a person. Yeah, that's yeah your wife. you got to look at it like that. Yeah. Like we are building this legacy together, right? We got children. We're building a legacy for them yeah. together. So it's never been like, yo, that's yours, that's mine. It's like, yo, marriage is like when two become one. And so like, that goes with obviously in a relationship, but that goes with our finances as well. There you go. Y'all got it. Will we say pick the right partner? Pick the right, pick the right partner. Pick the right one to right. pick the kitties up. That's right. it. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Invest Fest, man. Yes. Let's talk about it again for yeah. the people that are looking forward to the upcoming Invest Fest. How can they figure out where the information August is? August 25th through the 27th, right? The biggest right y'all? show, yeah. yeah. For sure. August 25th to August 27th in Atlanta, Georgia World Congress Center. Um, yeah, the goal is 20,000 <laughs> 20, people. Um, and it's a whole vibe. Uh, we got 500 small business vendors in the vendor marketplace area. So people selling a variety of different products. Um, we have food trucks, musical performances, legendary Jeezy in Atlanta. Yeah. From, the, from the bottom of the yeah. man. Yeah. And then, you know, um, ja Rule is going to be performing Uh-oh. also. 50? <laughs> no. Uh, I said we got to save some things. Right? We got we to space this thing out, right? Uh, right? Uh, Come God. on. Don't Don't Best best. <laughs> Don't put them on the same year. Yeah, no, we, we're spacing this thing out. 24 yeah. is still here. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. L'Oreal Fest. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's a fact. And then, yeah, you know, a bunch of great speakers. Diddy, Robert Smith, Steve Harvey again. Amazing. Oh, um, he's coming back. That's yeah, how you know. Yeah, he ain't playing back. no game. Uh, my yeah. boy, 19 Keys, killing the game right now. Yes. Rich, Rich Paul, one of okay. the most yes. powerful people in sports. Steve Stout. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you know, a tremendous executive for a long period of time. Ian Dunlap, our partner at Market Mondays. He's a stock market wizard. Um, my girl Ari Fletcher, yes, yes. she's doing a thing. Um, yes. And we also got Jada, Jada Waiter as well. So I want we wanted to kind of, you know, 
mix it up. I like, love you know, that. We got all kinds of different people. We got Mike Novogratz, who's a billionaire in crypto, talking about crypto. We got John Sally, Mike Rasheed, John Hope Bryant. Keep um, going. Benjamin Crump. Keep Ooh. going. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to do the Alice. The, the Tell lineup, him about the panels. <laughs> the lineup is crazy. You know, everything from real estate to reparations to stocks to cryptocurrency to inspiration, motivational speakers, Inky Johnson from Atlanta as well. So yeah. really wanted to just have a, a full offering. Yeah. We're not even just about finance. You got stuff about health. We got booths to register people to, to get um, for voting. This is the rolling right. loud of money. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. And it's, and it's diverse, right? There's, there's, there's women, um, there's men, but there's the age demographic, right? So you got somebody like Steve Harvey, but you got somebody, like you said, like Jada, who's young in this game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mil- Milano's going to be there as well, right? Fire. Right? Dave, Big Dave Cheese Day. Shout out to, yeah. <laughs> shout out to my man, Dad. <laughs> He'll Dave. be here. So there's different varieties of businesses, but they come from all ages. They come from all different types of backgrounds, that. but everybody's around business. That's why I said, like, every community has a culminating event. Mm-hmm. This is going to be the culminating event for everybody in the world, the business and finance. And so we're happy to have it here in Atlanta this year. Um, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's the biggest show for a reason. The That's biggest. Up, man. Yeah. That's and this up. is why y'all are the number one right. business podcast in the world. There it is. Business media company. The business the media <laughs> company, period. period. And y'all going to have the biggest show in August. Can't wait to check y'all out there because we will be in the building as well. We will be in the building. <laughs> man. Yeah, man. Everybody's going to be there, man. Earn le- earn your yeah. Yeah. They can get all the information that they need there on the website yep. at earnyourleisure.com. Yeah. Or, or, you, or you can go to investfest.com, but either or. Yep, you can okay. go. Go and get your tickets. Like I said, just from a networking standpoint too. Like that's great that all those people are going to be there, all the mm-hmm. billionaires and all of that. Yeah. But what's even probably more beneficial to your life is that there's going to be thousands of people there that you can network with, mm-hmm. right? So it's like now people will say all the time, like, "Well, I wish I had somebody to invest with. I wish I had a business partner. I wish I had a mentor. I wish I had this. I wish I had that." So I'm fine. It, it, it doesn't just come to you, right? Like, mm-hmm. by, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to go actively finding it. Mm-hmm. And this is a situation where you have twenty thousand people similar to yourself, all looking to better themselves yeah. in all different types of walks of life from different parts of the world. So I feel like it's just a great opportunity to be in a room. With yeah. that many positive, like-minded people, and you're almost guaranteed to meet at least like five to ten people, um, and you know, I feel like that probably is the most beneficial part of it as far as the networking part. Yeah, there's, right. there's a there's a very very high percent chance that you're gonna meet somebody in one of those walks of life. That's Look what's at that. and, and that's what that's about. And yeah, we did, we did we shout out to JD. JD will be in the, in the Jermaine, building as well. We're talking about Atlanta legends. Yeah, yes. we're we, we gonna highlight our Atlanta legends, man. So shout out to JD. I love that. Yeah. We, we want to thank y'all too yeah. for putting the community on and yeah. you know exactly. giving them that information, that wealth of information. Yeah, it's very <laughs> like, I like that. that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important what y'all doing. It's very much respected and and well needed, and we appreciate y'all. And thank y'all for coming on today, just talking to us about it, man. Right. Big yeah. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Shout out to Troy, earn your leisure, man. We appreciate y'all. Go to the website, investfest.com, and get down with the program. Go right. invest in the InvestFest. There you go. So that you can invest in yourself. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. Yeah, it is, baby. It's That's more than hustle. Yeah. Thank you. We, we are the morning hustle.